welcome to Baha'i On Air. I'm Rahman Rehani. We don't have to look far to realize that we're living in a very troubled world. To many a world of peace seems impossible at worst and elusive at best. Members of the Baha'i faith hold a very different, a very optimistic outlook. We believe a time of globe-encompassing peace is not only possible, but inevitable. True peace can only be achieved by a shift in the consciousness of all the peoples of the earth and their subsequent generations. A day-by-day, step-by-step struggle which forces people to associate with one another in the spirit of concord and harmony, and not contention and estrangement. Members of the Baha'i faith around the world are involved in various grassroots initiatives which aim to bring about this shift in mankind's consciousness. A few years ago, I was lucky enough to take part in one such initiative, the Education for Peace program of Australia, which recently celebrated its 10-year anniversary. While the program has its roots in the teachings of the world's major religions, including the Baha'i Faith, its inspiration was a particular document prepared by the world governing body of the Baha'i Faith, the Universal House of Justice. This message, the promise of world peace, was released to the world in 1985 and is more relevant now than ever. The document outlines the grave social ills from which the world suffers and offers some practical and spiritual solutions which when put into practice will inevitably bring about world peace. In this episode of Baha'i On Air, we'll look at the Education for Peace program, its goals, its ideals, and how it is a prime example of peace in the making. Nestled away in the southern highlands of rural New South Wales, just 90 minutes from the hustle and bustle of Sydney, is a tranquil little town, Yerrimbal. Yerrimbal has been the home of the Education for Peace program since its inception. Every year it attracts young people from all over Australia and the Pacific to take part in its various residential courses, one of which is Education for Peace. The program is run by the Education for Peace Institute, which is a non-profit, non-governmental organization dedicated to the building of a culture of peace throughout society. The Australian Institute aims to instill both the knowledge and skills required to become peacemakers, both at home and in the wider community, in perhaps the most crucial segment of our society, our young people. We felt that there was a gap in a spiritual education of the junior youth um, at very critical stage of their development. 13 years old is the time that they start to form the identity about who they are, what their roles are in the society, what their aim and objectives are. It came into my life at such an important time when I was 13, when I was going through that stage of self-discovery. It helps them make decisions when they're older and eventually work together to try and create peace or at unity. Having these skills allows you to have a great deal of optimism that a lot of other people don't have in these times of great trouble. We would like them to experience something very different from the day-to-day -day life that they have. Arising out of an educational philosophy based on developing self-esteem, the program seeks to instill morals, values, and fundamental spiritual truths in order to complement formal academic education, to produce happier, more productive, and more proactive members of society. However, Baha'is believe the cause of the world's ills transcend moral and ethical reasons, and are the result of a basal lack of individual spirituality. People are turning their face towards, you know, peace, we need peace here, you know, we have to solve these conflicts through, you know, good deeds, through consultation. And I mean, if we, if we want to start that, we have to really start at a, an individual level. A lot of the studying techniques that they taught me, a lot of the conflict resolution techniques, I used it in my daily life. And just also the spiritual aspects of the course as well, helped keep me focused during these years when you're facing a lot of new challenges with your friends and with yourself. Values particularly relating to the, the ethics of how you relate to other people. 
the types of consideration you give to other people or, or to groups, the types of consideration you give to people of the opposite sex, if you're a young boy dealing with young women, etc. What will happen is we share the virtues with the person next to us, we read both sides, and then we read out the affirmation. We are peacemakers, we care for the earth and all humans. We got reliability, we are reliable, we keep our promises. We sort of set up Education for Peace program to give them enough of knowledge and, and wisdom and a spiritual perception uh, about who they are, or what is their aim in life, and how can they contribute positively to the society. Uh, Savannah and I had moderation. And be real agents of change in their own lives and in the lives of everybody that they, uh, they encounter, everybody that they touch. It embraces practicing the virtues and having a community life which is really empowering and encouraging. And the spirit of education for peace was something which I took on board and have with me for the rest of my life. And it also inspires you to become more attracted to serving humanity. A lot of the students that are involved in the Education for Peace program um, become assistant faculty members. A lot of them go and do a year of service program in different countries around the world. So it really shapes your identity as a person. I did my service in Samoa. That was mainly due to my father's involvement in the islands at a young age when he first became a Baha'i. And over there, I mean, I did a variety of things. Not only I did things for the faith, I did things for the wider community as well. I was organised in a lot of charitable events. I worked with ASOP, WHO, a lot of humanity organisations, just to increase the economic state of the country and health and hygiene and other issues. But young people are naturally idealistic and to see injustices happening and, and they're politically aware and they, they see the world situation and they have judgments about it, they have thoughts about it, but they're not always so sure of how they can act on those, those thoughts or where they can go to make a difference. And my parents are like, you know, you should really go. And at first I was a little um, resistant to go, but like once I got here it was quite fun and I enjoyed myself. And since Education for Peace, I've, after that I've done the advanced program as well as the leadership. Yeah. They come here, feels like they are loaded, they feel heavy. And first I thought it's because it's a new sort of place for them, they're not used to being away from their parents. And then slowly, slowly over the years I learned how they transform. They become very comfortable with themselves. Initially, people are quite closed into themselves. But as the residential progresses, people tend to open up and be more trusting with other people. In the classrooms, we had a series of simulations where basically we would go through um, different guiding principles of the Baha'i faith and how these relate to the current issues within, in the world today. For example, the equality of men and women, the oneness of humanity and the elimination of all forms of prejudice, and how these concepts relate to issues such as poverty in the world and those extremes of wealth and poverty. When they see injustice as a spiritual wrong, not just as an, eco, as an economic wrong or a social wrong, they have a motivation for addressing it that goes deeper than just, is this financially you know, doable? Do, do we provide clean water to a, a village? Well, it's going to cost a lot of money, so maybe not. When they see that as a spiritual imperative, that clean water, good health, education is something that's required of, for all people, then they have you know, a real motivation to go out and address those issues. While the program has its roots in the teachings of the Baha'i Faith, it incorporates its concepts and ideas from a variety of social, moral and spiritual sources including all the world's major religions. All religions essentially teach the same spiritual truth. It helps you understand the nature of what a human being is and um, how we can perhaps relate to the spiritual kingdom and be a part of the spiritual world and the relationship which human beings have with you know, the prophets, founders of different religions, with religion, with God, and um, humanity. Just taking your children to sports, you know, develop on their physical being, 
just taking them to you know music lessons to school is not enough. The Education for Peace program developed its own material over a number of years and presents them in a peaceful and supportive, yet creative and dynamic learning environment. It incorporates formal classes, workshops, I'm ready. <laughs> experimental learning exercises, and active participation in community projects. Schools generally are, although they're about a uh, an inclusive education, they are sometimes in a in situation that because they don't know everybody's beliefs, they don't understand them, so they avoid them rather than, than have to, to teach about them because rather than cause offence by teaching wrongly, they, they don't do it at all. Feel more comfortable with everyone, get more knowledge. It has got components in conflict resolution, consultation. Um, it has got components in human rights. And keep our friendships that we made now. <laughs> Is it has now realised that conflict resolution skills are required in every sphere, no matter how technical. So you could go into a very technical field. It could be telecommunications and you need problem solving. It could be banking and you need problem solving. Brain has got the fantastic capabilities. Well, we have a set timetable in the way the lectures and the free time works, but it's organized in such a way that learning is not only by learning from the teacher, but learning from each other. So a lot of the programs and, um, in the classes are not just a, someone standing at the front giving a talk, but also we're broken up into groups. We have assistant faculty members, older youth that we look up to that help us in finding ideas and discussing things. Often we're learning more from each other. The youth, when they teach and assist us, really give it that driving impulse and that driving creativity and vitality, which we so need, which really touches their hearts. So when we can combine vitality with wisdom, if we can impart both these to the youth, then I consider my task completed. Some of them are young, the faculty, yeah, and yeah, they're cool. <laughs>It's a very friendly place, it's very united, it, the atmosphere here is just perfect. Now after 10 years, we are in a position to embark on new challenges and I will share with you what these challenges are. Let me just first learn how to use this gadget. Just that's oh, the first time I work with a computer remotely. When I look back, it was a very innocent start because really we were not aware of significance and impact of this program. I personally play an awful lot of guitar. I love music and the Education for Peace program has really put me on a very straight career path and my hobby path. Um, the topics of the songs that I write now are just drawn directly from what I've learned at this school. Be not ashamed. My grandmother, she always used to say, a picture says a thousand words, so I didn't prepare a speech. <laughs> really a celebration of progress, seeing the course come to fruition from very, very humble beginnings to embracing all people rather than just a small geographical section of the community. It's just amazing. As you can all see, I had found a hairdresser finally. <laughs> and coming back from being a student to being part of the faculty, I can really see those changes over the six years that I've been involved in the course and it's just mind-blowing. Key to this concept of interaction is the positive and constructive bonding of young people, irrespective of age, race, gender or any other form of distinction. The underlying purpose of the Baha'i Faith is unity, which doesn't just mean tolerating or being politically correct to those people who we consider as others. You make spiritual bonds with these people. And the youth that I've met in my program are youth that I'm still with today, youth that I've traveled with, and youth that I'll be for my whole life. When you come here, there's a wide variety of youth from different backgrounds, from different places in Australia that come here specifically for this program. 
you spend a full week getting to know each other, you know, forming bonds, forming relationships, strengthening your own self in different activities. I think the environment is one of love and support and acceptance for, for all the, both the staff and like the faculty, the, the students themselves. There aren't the distinctions between junior years, senior years, staff and those sort of things. Everybody eats together, everybody takes turns washing up, doing duty, they work together, they have a day of service. This is quite interesting that our staff here are a lot less hierarchical than many workplaces. Every single day, every staff member, which includes from our director to our assistant faculty, which are people who were students just two years ago, will meet. And in the spirit of consultation, we will decide on all of the uh, day's issues. Unity is about total acceptance of every other soul as a unique creation, like a brother or a sister. In the program, the participants are taught about the belief system of others and how and why they have these beliefs, particularly those of indigenous cultures. We've actually done in my subject, taken the youth on spirit walks around the Yarrumble grounds and identified some of the areas, not just in terms of physical buildings, but in terms of spiritual aspects of them. So the lecture halls became the place of learning. The, there's a ring of stones where they often have a fire during winter and we identified that as, as the, the sharing place and it helped them view the world somewhat differently when instead of just being a, a physical name on things they looked at the spiritual meaning as a, the emotional connection to it as a way of helping them explore the fact that Indigenous people have emotional connections to their land that are, are maybe difficult for European to understand. Progresses in learning more about the different teachings of, of the Baha'i Faith and their application. Uh, so the oneness of mankind, the quality of men and women, uh, the importance of the environment and nature and so forth. It's, um, it's a bush setting. As soon as you walk into the gates, uh, you feel you're completely cut off from the world. And you've got the beauty of the the birds, of the trees, of the weather. Because we do not have sort of program which is heavily dependent on um, television, videos, we are quite sort of in a relaxed mood, connect to each other rather than being isolated from the group on their cell phone or sort of being behind the computer, having access to their email. We do use technology for our courses. We do have a very big lab here. We do have computers, but that is part of their education. The EFP program is not all in class. Same color shirt! It's to do with the fun that they have outside of the class as well, in the evenings and the, the other sessions that are held as part of the program. Um, Chaste and holy life, they study the life of the central figures of the Baha'i faith and they do have uh, some research and project that they have to do to um, research in the community to, to be able to do their projects. Peace within and without. Patience with school friends. There's a lot of interracial interaction among people. Education for Peace tries to provide universal and global values and attitudes for junior youth and try to get them familiar with these values and help them to develop a better understanding of significance of those values and attitudes. Therefore, prepare them to live in a society which requires those values in order to provide a harmonious environment for everyone, a peaceful environment, and produce a society which is creative, provides accommodation in terms of space for everyone. We start to see ourselves as the flowers of one garden, as Baha'u'llah tells us that we are, and that the differences in shape and colour aren't to be feared or to be ridiculed. They should be enjoyed and to be respected and valued. And I think that approach of, of seeing ourselves first as spiritual beings and then as, as human beings and then as, as one family is quite unique and it really does give them something special. You don't have to worry about any prejudices or anything like racism or 
a financial status or anything. In normal social life out there, when you walk around the streets, you know that someone is making notes about you because of who you are or where you come from and how you dress like. But here, there are no boundaries, no prejudices. The time of youth is a crucial one in which both external and internal forces are shaping the type of person we will become. At most schools, great emphasis is given to students on what they will do with their life. But this is mainly in terms of further study or future employment. Well, in high school, you, you learn to um, try to achieve the best you can in terms of academic achievement. But in education and peace, it's not about how great you achieve. It's about um, trying to develop more spiritually developed, better person. At this point of time too, where there's such an upheaval of, of politics and of, of world situations, where there seems to be such a, a media focus on negative influence and negative events, I think that cycle of, of destruction, of, of loss and of, of terrible things happening, they need to have some sort of counterbalance to see that there's also a positive. The thing I like most about education for peace is the way you can work together in achieving your goals. The things you learn are really good for your future development. The Education for Peace program aims to better the students' knowledge of who they are and thus give them a more well-rounded vision of where they wish to take their life into the future. The Education for Peace program has taught me about sacrifice and as a result it's directed my career path. Before I'm doing medicine, before it would just be wherever would be the easiest place to get a job. But now it's taught me that there are other issues that are more important in a person's life, such as addressing the need of humanity. And as a result, the course has directed me towards this line of action. For example, moving to a rural area and practicing over there. To gain cooperation skills, experience... It not only discusses knowledge, but it's knowledge into action. Once you've completed the program, you're a completely new person. You want to do new things in your life. You want to go out in the world. You want to really change the world because you've not only learned how to do it, but you want to do it in action. So, service is definitely a key word. <laughs> when I finish high school, I want to be a psychiatrist because I can help people the way that Education for Peace and stuff has helped me. Leadership, which is a course that trains people in moral, moral leadership, in spiritual leadership, in, in all aspects of that, to take on activities that involve teaching children or taking on group activities as such. And we sat there one afternoon and said, OK, let's start Education for Peace. And all of us looked at each other and said, OK, how can we start it? And we didn't know what trouble we were getting ourselves in until we had the first residential. And we realized that that was really the biggest challenge dealing with junior youth 13 to 15 years of age. But they came to have fun. And we knew that the purpose was not that. Anyway, that caused some problems. We managed to overcome it. We cried a lot. Everyone cried so much. I'm looking at me, them, everyone cried, all of us. It, and it was over nothing. Like, we'd sit down and then. And for the rest of the camp, we'd be crying over anything. Somebody steps on an ant on their way in. <laughs> Why the ant? <laughs> it created a fire and passion in us that still burns today. And we would like to thank our intake and the faculty who shaped our lives. Aside from the pressure of planning and working towards their future, young people face a great deal of social pressure during these formative years. There's a lot of pressures in high school nowadays about self-esteem and social problems. Like, you have to tolerate people influencing you to take drugs or drink alcohol or lose your chastity, yeah. Sex is a big one. Um, the physical relationship between a guy and a girl. Um, yeah, not having a boyfriend at the moment, I don't have one because I'm really not interested. And there's big pressure for me to get one and I don't see why that's a big one. But for me, it's not really a problem because Education for Peace gives me other friends that I don't really need to cling on to my friends at school. You have other people to go to and they'll understand. Lots of their friends that I see, my, my children's friends, 
that don't have that background, don't have a lot that they're basing their choices in. They're making choices based on friends or media and those choices change from day to day almost. In the world today, youth suicide is a big issue. In any country you go to, it's always a huge problem and the government's finding it hard to deal with. The Education for Peace course provides you with the right tools to deal with this. It, it, it'll inspire the youth and will give them a sense of hope that they'll carry with them throughout their life. Religion plays a central role in a young person's life, acting as a pillar of strength in the day-to-day -day struggles of these crucial years. If I go to parties, I'd be able to see I'm more grounded with my decisions and what I make at those parties. Because a lot of the quotes and the ideas that we learn at the program deal with these things. A lot of this has been translated into uh, devotional gatherings with youth today, inspired to have prayers together and prayers with people from various backgrounds to come together and put that in action. And let the tidings of the revelation of thine incorruptible essence bring me joy. I've learnt about spiritual development and about the importance of prayer and the importance of reading writings for inspiration. This begins to give the youth an understanding that religious experience isn't unique to them, it's not unique to their culture, that it's been an ongoing experience of mankind and one of the linking things of humanity is in fact is our religious experience. We learnt about central role of religion in the advancement of mankind. That assignment was really, really fun. I ended up doing 14 pages on that. It was really good. What I want is for them to find a happiness in their heart which doesn't wax or wane in regards to what life throws at them. Almost a happiness like contentment or certitude. And this I'm starting to see in them. And the second aim is to develop in them a desire that once they find this happiness that they wish to share it with other people and that they will have the skills to systematically share it with other people. As Baha'is, what we have to offer is that we have an order, a new world order to base these things in. And these young people coming through this program are the forerunners of the establishers of that world order. If you would like more information about the Education for Peace program or would just like to know more about the Baha'i faith, check out our website at www.baha'i.org.nz. Thank you for watching Baha'i On Air. I'm Rahman Rehani. We'll see you next time. Kakite. I think the biggest gift is for them to understand the gift within them.